Hi, my name is Susan B. Lahaki, and I'm running for President of the United States as a write-in. So eventually down the road, you'll have to spell my name if you want to vote for me when you get your ballots. But for right now, you don't have to do anything. Uh, this video is one for the children. As a mom and uh, as a concerned citizen about our kids and everything, I think it's important to have uh, children's books read periodically for them and with them. And they should be stories that are easy to follow with a good message. So I came across a book when I was raising my daughter called Treasury of Virtues, Stories to Grow On. I think this was published back in the early 2000s. And my daughter and I, we both loved it when uh, when I had it when she was young and I would read her the stories. So um, since I've noticed there's a lot of corruption in our uh, political system right now, um, I would like to read a, a story to you about honesty. It's called The Emperor's New Clothes and it's illustrated by Sherry Need die and adapted by Mary Rowitz. So it's an adaptation of the original children's book or the original story. What I can say is that my camera's acting funny and if I show you a picture it's going to put everything backwards. I suppose I could do that and then you could look at it in a mirror and then you could you could read it. Uh, but uh, or maybe not. But anyways I'll try to periodically show a photo when they have a photo, but it doesn't make sense to show you words because you're not going to be able to read them. So uh, if you're ready, um, I don't know, grab some water or uh, milk and cookies and let's, uh, let's get going. All right. So once upon a time, there was an emperor who loved clothes more than anything else. He had more clothes than anyone in the land. The emperor's clothes filled all the closets and most of all the rooms in the royal palace. It was a good thing the emperor was very rich because he spent so much money on clothes. The emperor selected only the finest, the most comfortable fabrics, and he hired the best tailors to work for him. The emperor also spent a lot of money on mirrors. He thought his fancy clothes made him look quite dashing. So he spent most of his free time looking at himself. Now I'll show you a picture of him. There we go. Can you see? He's looking quite fancy in his little outfits. <clears throat> the Emperor's pride was well known throughout the kingdom. Everyone thought he was quite silly to spend so much time in front of the mirrors. They made jokes behind the Emperor's back, but no one ever said anything directly to his face. They did not want to make the emperor angry because he was, after all, the ruler of the land. Word of the silly emperor who loved fine clothes reached two thieves in a faraway land. <clears throat> Instead of making jokes about him, the thieves thought of a way that they could use the emperor's pride to make themselves rich. The thieves dressed up as traveling tailors <clears throat> and made the long journey to the emperor's palace. They told the palace guards that they had the most wonderful fabrics in all of the world and they asked for permission to show it to the emperor. Of course, the guards let them into the palace. So here are the two 
fake tailors or thieves, would-be thieves, coming into the palace. <clears throat> the, the sneaky thieves presented themselves to the emperor and his wife. They explained that their fabric was not only wonderful, but magical too. Only the wisest people in the land will see this fabric, they said. It will be invisible to fools and to those who are unfit for their office. When the thieves opened their bags, the emperor squinted like this. He saw nothing at all in their hands. Why, I must be a fool, thought the emperor. Either that or I do not deserve to sit on this throne. The emperor was embarrassed that he could not see the fabric. <clears throat> so he said, that is the most magnificent fabric I have ever seen. The emperor asked his wife what she thought of the magical fabric. She couldn't see anything, but she did not want to want anyone to think she was a fool. So she said, it is quite extraordinary. It's like no other fabric that I know. So here they are, the two thieves with the emperor and showing the fabric. But as you see, it's not really there, right? Hmm. Knowing his wife was no fool, the emperor thought the fabric must be real, even though he could not see it. He offered the thieves 20 pieces of gold to make a new suit for him. They thanked the emperor and went to work right away. When you wear this suit, it will feel as light as a spider's web against your skin, one thief said as he measured the top of the emperor's head. The other thief then explained, you might even feel as though you were wearing nothing at all. I can't wait to try on my new suit, said the emperor excitedly. It really sounds like it's the most wonderful fabric in the world. The thieves smiled slyly and winked at each other behind the emperor's back. They had finished sizing him up. There we go. See, they're like measuring him. Both of them. <clears throat> After a few days, the royal minister went to see how the new suit was coming along. He was going to tell the tailors to work as quickly as possible because the emperor was getting anxious. The minister was stunned by what he didn't see. The tailors were cutting away at the air with scissors, and they were stitching up fabric that wasn't there. Is it possible that I am a fool? The minister gulped. Seeing the minister, one of the thieves said, Please tell the emperor that the suit will be soon ready. But first, please, order another tray of food for us. All this hard work is making us very hungry. 
That much must be true, the minister thought as he saw apple cores, chicken legs, and bits of cheese all over the floor. The thieves have eaten so much already, they must be working hard at something. No, it's already been 10 minutes, so let's make a pause here, and then I'll pick up on the next part of the story. Bye for now.